There are a lot of system agnostic tabletop role playing games. From Genesis for its narrative driven game to GURPS for its insanely detailed and highly mechanical system. Fiasco's great for wacky and zinny one shot adventures, Savage Worlds if you like light adventure, action, and themes of Pulp Fiction, and there's a lot more. I could be here for months, years even. But there's one system I have tried that allows for one, flexibility, two, an easy GM learning curve, three, rules to play most genres, even combat limited or combat light genres, and even has a free quick start guide so you can jump right into the game without paying full price. I'm talking about basic role playing system. So today, I'm going to be discussing Chaosium's basic role playing TTRPG and why you should give it a try. First, what is Chaosium's BRP? BRP, or basic role playing, is Chaosium's cystic agnostic rulebook. It gives you the framework to create a character for any sort of genre of RPG you want to play using Chaosium's percentile dice mechanics. What is Chaosium's dice system? Well, Chaosium's dice system is percentile. To succeed at any check, you need to roll under the target number of your skill check. If you played Call of Cthulhu, 7C, or RuneQuest, you more than likely can figure out BRP, and you can figure out any other Chaosium game. Some other defining characteristics of BRP and Chaosium games is that these games are known for skill-based experience and quote-unquote leveling up. Your characters evolve based on practicing or learning new skills rather than arbitrarily gaining experience in a level. Whereas in D&D 5e, you go up one level, and in Chaosium, your character's skills might go up by, say, 1%, 2%, 3% or more, simply by them using them often, training, going to school, education, learning from the streets, whatever have you. Plus, another aspect is that most info for players is present on the character sheet on the first page, so you don't need to worry about multiple pages of information, unlike some other RPGs. But I'm sure for many of you, you've only played D&D or you might not have ever played a Chaosium game. So you're very worried about, oh, learning all the rules and whether or not this is a complicated TTRPG. And I'm going to tell you from personal experience as someone who's only, before running this system, played one one shot in Call of Cthulhu, you can play this game and run it with relative ease. In fact, let me give you a quick example of how roles would look like in the Chaosium system using the percentile dice system. Your player character is chasing after a potential culprit on a recent homicide in this pulp Cthulian horror basic role playing game. The culprit leaps over a rooftop. To get over there, you might need to jump that rooftop. This will require you to make a jump skill check. The same logic applies to Call of Cthulhu, BRP, RuneQuest, 7C, or whatever TTRPG from Chaos in your playing. So, you go ahead and roll your D100. The target number you have to reach is under 45. You roll a 43. You succeed. You're able to leap over the rooftop with relative ease and no problems. Now, in Chaosium games, there also are critical successes and fumbles. If you fumble, it's a 99 or D100 roll, while if it's a special success happens, it's one-fifth of the required success for that roll. So, BRP has the potential to be a great entry into trying system agnostic games without being overly complicated like GURPS or super narrative-driven, say, like Genesis. In fact, their major reason is because it can play a wide array of genres. BRP allows for flexibility in the genres you can play. The character creation allows you to create a game focused on what you and the players want. Do you, as a GM or player, want to play a political intrigue game with limited combat? Well, the skill-based game allows to build a variety of characters for this campaign. For instance, you want to play an artist. You can focus on social or mental skills related around crafting art and seducing your opponent or adversary. Maybe you want to play a character that's driving based. Well, there are plenty of skills that allow for driving based characters. Or maybe you want to play a hacking character. Well, there are plenty of mental and knowledge based skills that are related to your character. But if you want to play a more combat oriented game, that's also totally fine with skills that allow for that. After all, there are over 45 professions with some of them being genre specific, like the adventurer, wizard, or warrior professions. So, you can play a high fantasy D&D like game using Chaosium's percentile dice system. Or, you can play a more zany Scooby Doo esque horror game without any of the sanity checks that Chaosium's Call of Cthulhu offers. If you want to be even more weird, you can run a high zany anime inspired TTRPG with focus on exploration in a fantasy world. Think of an isekai. The combination of skills, 
optional rules, and several types of weapons, armors, and settings allow for a flexibility in genres that you can play that other systems might be more rigid to. And with all this potential means there is a chance and a possibility for more or less crunchiness in your TTRPG. There are loads of optional rules to make this already pretty deadly Chaosium game even more deadly. You want a more complex combat system with HP bars and HP specifics for every body part location? Then you have optional rule points for that by hit location. You want a more hardier character, one that can take more hits and that can be more powerful HP wise. GMs can ask players to make characters HP both their con plus their size. Want to have initiative rules similar to D&D or Pathfinder? Well, they have optional rules for combat as well, especially for all the D&D or Pathfinder veterans. Maybe you want to focus more on characters throughout their lives, maybe as they solve problems for a local city, or as they get older. Then you have optional rules like aging and inaction mechanics. This customizability allows for new and old game masters to experiment with how much work they want to invest. If you want a more lighthearted game with less crunchy combat, then you can opt out of many of the optional rules. Or if you want more nuance and complexity, then you're able to add that as you as a game master see fit. Great thing too is that there is support for this system online and offline. If you want to play BRP on Roll20, there is customizability for that. Though Roll20's character sheets and general design and UI can be desired. So if you're expecting Call of Cthulhu style sort of design and prettiness, then you're not going to get that. But you're definitely going to get a free VTT that will do everything you need and work effectively for all of your gaming sessions. However, if you want to spend a little bit more money and you are planning on running, say, maybe a higher end game or you're a GM who gets paid to do what they do, then you should definitely invest in Fancy Grounds VTT. This VTT cuts down the calculations, especially for new players, and also just looks really good from what I can see. In person, to play this game, all you need is dice, miniatures, and a GM screen and your GM notes and character sheets. Also, B should have multiple D10s, D6s, and D4s. Otherwise, that's all you really need. Finally, the unique aspect to Chaosium's BRP is the spot rule. What are spot rules? Spot rules are guidelines or rules for handling specific effects or occasions that might pertain to your game. This is intended usually for the game master, but this can depend on the game. Maybe you're playing in a high fantasy game. You're probably not going to need the radiation spot rule in your TTRPG. But what if you're playing a post-apocalyptic Fallout-esque TTRPG? Then you're probably going to need the radiation rules if it gets to that point. But why care about spot rules? Well, unexpected stuff will come up in your games. For instance, a player of mine decided to make a makeshift aerosol flamethrower, which by the way was pretty damn creative. This required the fire and heat spot rule. Ultimately, the spot rule will become handy in games when you need them rather than if you're looking for them. But don't let spot rules slow you down. If it takes too long to decide on a ruling, just make something up that's satisfactory and adjust the rule post game. So as you can probably tell, I may Huge BRP enthusiast. BRP has a lot of flexibility and allows me to play very specific games or very nuanced games or very lighthearted games depending on the mechanics that I include. So if you want to check out this TTRPG, give the Quickster guy over here down below in the description box a check. Or if you have questions or concerns about BRP or Chaos in Games, let me know down below in the comment section. And while I am a BRP enthusiast, that was definitely inspired by the new release of its most recent edition of BRP, I also love a lot of other TTRPGs, and that includes Powered by the Apocalypse games. In fact, I have a video discussing PBTA games if you're looking for new games to talk about over here. And as always, I'm your average everyday queer host, Blurdy Disposition. Hope y'all have an awesome day. Ciao!